are institutions. Institutions are the basic rules of the game that frame economic activity. Institutions have been part of economics as long as there's been economics, beginning with Adam Smith up through current Nobel Prize winners like Eleanor Ostrom and Douglas North. Economists have studied the way in which institutions guide human behavior. The rules of the game that institutions comprise might include things like property rights, the rule of law, how contracts are enforced. The reason why economists care so much about institutions is because when economists go to look at how economic outcomes take place, what we're concerned about is how those institutions channel behavior. What we tend to assume is that human behavior is a constant. People respond to incentives and knowledge. But what matters is how those incentives and knowledge are framed by those institutions, because it's the framing that those institutions put forward that determine whether the consequences of people pursuing their own self-interest turn out to be good or bad. So what institutions do is determine whether or not the pursuit of self-interest will lead to consequences that benefit society or that don't benefit society. Every society has institutions, whether it's a market economy or a full-blown socialist state. We can compare capitalism to communism or markets to government to see how well each channels human behavior in ways that generate good consequences. Capitalism and socialism create different constraints on human behavior, and therefore they produce different kinds of outcomes. Consider markets, for example. Markets are nothing more than a set of institutions that allows for voluntary exchange. Markets require the protection of private property, the rule of law, and the enforcement of contracts. All of those are part of our constitution that, by protecting those institutions, create society in which wealth is created through market exchange. Consider socialism by contrast. Under socialism, government owns those resources. Government decides how goods and services will be allocated. Unlike markets where individuals make those decisions, socialism is a system in which the institutional arrangement gives that power to bureaucrats and politicians. So when we compare markets with socialism, we can see the great prosperity created by markets. Over the last several hundred years, markets have made people incomparably richer, particularly the least well-off among us. Socialism, by contrast, has created little more than poverty and misery. Institutions also help us understand a core difference between markets and politics. Once we take behavior as constant, we know that people will seek after their self-interest and try to improve themselves. The question they face is, should they improve themselves by trying to make profit in the marketplace, or should they try to enhance their wealth by working through the political system? This question matters because the outcomes of those two different ways of seeking wealth are vastly different. If one wants to seek wealth in the marketplace, one satisfies one's own self-interest by producing goods and services that benefit others. In the marketplace, profit comes from creating value and benefiting other people through creating products and services that improve their lives. By contrast, the only way to benefit in politics is by redistributing wealth from other people. Governments can't create wealth. Governments gain their wealth by taxing the citizenry, who are the ultimate source of wealth. And the more people choose to acquire wealth through politics, we get more redistribution. Government takes more of the productive energies of its hardworking citizens. So the choice between pursuing profit through markets and government matters. And if all we talk about is that profit seeking is good, we're missing the key role that institutions play in channeling profit seeking in good and bad directions. So if we want to talk about the importance of seeking profit, we also have to talk about the importance of doing so in the marketplace, where profit seeking means the creation of value. The bigger the role for government, the more people are tempted to increase their wealth through government, and that's only redistributive. That winds up taking from the productive and rewarding those with political connections. In this sense, markets are truly remarkable. Market institutions harness the energy of people and lead them to benefit others by producing goods and services that also lead to profit for themselves. Profit should not be a dirty word. Profit, in fact, is proof of social service. When firms profit in the marketplace, it's because they've benefited others. In government, by contrast, people benefit not from helping others or providing with them with goods and services. People benefit by redistributing from others towards themselves. And we know from history that government policies have a long tradition of failing at achieving their intended goals. Government policies tend not to help people become better off. Rather, they worsen people's position by redistributing income away from the productive people to those with political connections. Many people believe that government institutions in fact help the poor, and that government regulation of business is a good way to protect poor people against the power of the wealthy. But one of the things we also know is because government transfers money, lots of people have an interest in getting involved in transferring that money to themselves. And it's going to be the rich and powerful who are going to be most likely to benefit from government, not the poor. After all, it's the rich and powerful who have the easiest access to convince politicians to transfer resources to them. 
So we see that institutions matter a great deal. A society's institutions determine whether or not people's attempts to improve their own lives will lead to good consequences or bad consequences, whether they'll lead to prosperity or poverty. Across the globe, we see that good institutions like the protection of property rights, the rule of law, and the enforcement of contracts lead people to pursue avenues that create wealth and benefit their fellow citizens. Whereas the larger the role for government is, the less likely it is that people will engage in activity that benefit others. In fact, the larger the role of government is, the more people get concerned about redistributing wealth rather than creating it. And if we want the United States to continue to be the engine of prosperity it's been for the last 200 years, we need to continue to protect those institutions that are enshrined in our Constitution, such as the protection of property rights and the rule of law, if we want to make the United States again an engine of prosperity. Institutions matter. Institutions determine whether people's attempts to improve their own lives will benefit their fellow citizens. Thank <music> you.